The only thing better than programming MicroPython is programming MicroPython over Wi-Fi, which we'll do on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. One of the key benefits of MicroPython is how simple it is to use. And the web interface is no exception, because while the serial interface is helpful, if you don't have access to a data cable, then you can't really use it. So after an initial setup where we enable the web interface, we'll be able to log into an access point and then upload our code from a handy web interface. Now to use this, you can check out the Nullbyte article because there are a list of products you'll need in order to do this, including an ESP8266 based module, which could be either a D1 Mini or like this, a Node MCU. Although if you want to just use a bare uh, ESP8266 module, I guess you could also do that too. You'll also need a micro USB cable and a computer, although the operating system doesn't really matter for this. You just need to initially be able to connect over the serial interface. Once you have all those things together, then we can begin. Now to get started with this, we're going to go ahead and first plug in our ESP8266 and then run the command to find which serial port it is connected to. In this case, we can see that it is connected here. And this is the address we're going to address it at when we use the following commands. Now I'm going to run this from scratch. And although I've done a lot of these before, we're going to run through them again so that it's really obvious. We're going to go ahead and use the ESP tool to erase the board entirely. And this will prevent any lingering code from causing problems. And again, make sure that you first make sure that you're connecting to the right uh, serial port, because if you do the wrong one, you'll either get an error, which is frustrating, or you might flash the wrong board or something else. So there we go. We've gone ahead and flashed it. And now I'm going to use this command to actually flash the board with the correct firmware, which will allow us to then pop up an access point and access this via the remote interface. Now I'm going to try this initially and it probably won't work and I will explain why. Uh, first, we'll go ahead and upload the MicroPython binary and then in a little bit, once it finishes uploading, we should have the option to connect to it over Wi-Fi. Now, that that is done, I'm going to go ahead and go to the GitHub here. And we can see the web read evaluate print loop is a tool for MicroPython that allows us to directly connect to it without needing any wires. And what the this is in general is a web interface that you'll download. And then when you open it, you will connect it to the board uh, over Wi-Fi and it will allow you to upload stuff, download stuff and do all sorts of great things. So. In order to use this, we'll need to click on clone or download. Here, we'll go to a terminal window and then type git clone. And you can see that mine isn't empty because uh, I already downloaded it. But once yours downloaded, you can type cd web repel and then ls. And you can see that what we need is right here, the web repel HTML. Okay, so now I'm going to look at my Wi Fi and we're going to select MicroPython and the password is MicroPython with a capital N at the end. And it's not going to ask me because I already put it in, but MicroPython capital N at the end. So now if I type open uh, web repel HTML, it's probably going to fail. So here we can see that we have the web interface. If I hit connect, it says disconnected. It fails. It doesn't work. So if you're frustrated, if you uh, get disconnected over and over and just feel like this isn't going to work out for you, do not fear. There's a really simple way of fixing this. So let's go back to our terminal interface and we're going to access our board. And this is what happens if you don't update where it is. So I need to update the serial port because it changed after I unplugged it. Here we go. All right, so now we're in our MicroPython um, read evaluate print loop via serial. And this is we're connected directly over the wire and we need to actually enable something for this to work. And I did not know this and was very frustrated to find this out. So I found this in this great Adafruit guide. You need to import web refill setup. Very important. So we're gonna go ahead and go over here, paste. And you can see, do you want to enable or disable it running on boot? We're going to type E for enable. 
Now go ahead and set up a password and make sure to make it something super secure. And then type it in again and make sure it matches. And once that's done, then you'll get the option to reboot. And once this is complete, we should be able to connect via the web interface. All right, so it is restarted. I'm gonna go back to the web interface. I guess I'll just open it again. So I'll control A, K to kill the window, and then open the web interface. And let's hit connect. And it'll ask for our, our super secure password. And there we are, we're connected. Now the way that we can go ahead and upload and download code is super easy. If we wanna upload code, we can simply go here and for some reason I'll just upload maybe maybe not any of these a .py file and if we click on send to device there we go it sent the code and it is now on our microcontroller now to prove that I have a active interface I can just do a quick hello world And as you can see, I'm able to execute Python code from the command line on this microcontroller over Wi-Fi. And of course, this isn't encrypted or anything, but it is a great way to be able to both program and upload our existing programs without any sort of cables over Wi-Fi. The web interface of MicroPython is an incredible way of interacting with the board that otherwise requires you to have a serial connection. However, best practices definitely do apply when it comes to Wi-Fi security. Now, if you never change the default password and have MicroPython set up to be programmed this way, then somebody can take control of your board and embed all sorts of things in it. So make sure to change the default password as soon as you set this up, because if you have this enabled and left open, then anybody can seize control of your MicroPython board. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description for various troubleshooting tips. If you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.